Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. Honkai Star Rail is further upping the ante and meeting player expectations with additional end game content. So in today's video, I'll be going over five main tips for progressing through the new hardest content in the game. So what did Honkai Star Rail add? Well, they added a spin-off of the simulated universe called the Swarm Disaster. It's basically an end game version of the simulated universe gameplay mode. And it can also be enjoyed in the mid game-ish as well. So Swarm Disaster is essentially an enhanced slash more difficult and labyrinth style version of the regular simulated universe. So first we're just going to talk about some of the basics of the Swarm Disaster before we dive into some deeper tips. But first of all, it does not take any Trailblaze power, and it has a much higher difficulty than traditional simulated universes. And finally, it is Labyrinth style as you navigate through this little map, and each path that you select has a different playstyle similar to the current simulated universe. These paths operate in a very similar way. So we can see here that this is going to be the map that we navigate. We basically bounce from node to node to node to node. And our goal is to get as many buffs as possible before reaching, for example, this elite boss fight. And the goal is to do this through all three of these areas. And as we navigate through one of these maps, a very important thing to keep in mind is this countdown here. If this countdown reaches zero and goes into negative, which every time that we move to a node, this countdown will tick down one. If it goes down into the negative, then you have this planar disarray effect, which definitely buffs up the enemy quite a bit. So in other words, in order to avoid buffing up the enemy too much by moving too many times, you really want to focus on going to nodes that provide higher value than other nodes. For example, nodes with a warp trotter, which provide extra rewards will be more valuable than just a standard combat node like this one over here. Now, so far with E0S1 characters, I've only been able to clear difficulty four currently, <laughs> and I have not managed to clear difficulty five just yet. The reason for this is because the enemies here hit incredibly hard, like to the point where they're basically one-shotting your characters. So yeah, you absolutely have to farm a bit in order to actually progress through the game. So yeah, this is not an easy gameplay mode, at least while we're getting started. Now fortunately though, we get super, super buffed by the time that we reach the final boss fight, which is this giant replicating bug. And this is because you go through so many nodes, you pick up so many blessings and so many curios throughout this entire run. Your characters are going to be stronger than they've ever been before thanks to all the insane buffs that you gather. Next, let's talk about the paths and the builds. So each of these paths, similar to the current simulated universe, have a different playstyle and build, with the hunt being very DPS focused as well as it's always going to be my turn, it's my turn when I break the enemy, it's my turn when I do all this stuff. Hunt is a very damage focused build. Abundance, you know, you take your time and it's much more reliable. It provides tons of healing, so on and so forth. You guys should know the paths by now. I'm not really going to break down what each of the paths do, but instead I'm going to talk about what makes this different. Let's also go through one example of a path specific thing that you actually need to focus on. For example, with the path of the hunt, every time that you defeat one of these nodes with a trotter in them, then you actually get 30% crit damage. So by the time that you get through the end, you could be seeing a 300% crit damage buff just from that alone. So it is absolutely huge to focus on whatever your paths, um, you know, buff thing and conditional buff thing is right here, because this will stack and this will superpower your characters to kingdom come. Let's also quickly talk about path resonances. Let's take a look at this hunt path as an example. So here we can see that this has a path resonance and path resonances occur when you actually have the opportunity to grab, for example, three blessings of abundance in conjunction with having a bunch of blessings of the hunt. And once you have three blessings of abundance, you will gain some of these resonance formation and resonance interplays 
uh, bonus abilities essentially um, by grabbing three abundance blessings as well on top of the hunt blessings that you normally grab. And for the hunt, path of the hunt, we can see that you get three abundance, three elation in order to activate the corresponding resonance interplays. So you do actually want to keep in mind that the different paths will have different bonus resonance interplays as they're called by grabbing some blessings from other paths. Interestingly, I actually think that none of them have perfect synergy with kind of the sub ones that you grab, but I think that was done intentional so no individual path feels far too powerful. Now I'm not here to say which path is the best because I have not had the ability to test each one extensively and trust me this is a very very long gameplay mode and I'll talk about that a bit more <laughs> uh, down the road once we once we get there. And finally, there is a bonus path, a new one in this swarm disaster, and this is the propagation path. We can see it here that I have not unlocked it, but as you run through the swarm disaster simulated universe, you run into some swarm nodes, which will give you propagation path buffs. From what I've seen, these propagation path buffs really favor basic attack damage. And finally, it also is great at implanting spores on enemies, which has various effects. Like I think the spores explode and do quite a lot of additional damage to the enemy. So overall, this new path of propagation feels very powerful. And what's really cool about this is that once we've basically completed this swarm disaster um, gameplay mode, you will actually get this propagation path added to your regular simulated universe as well. Okay, so next let's talk about progression as well as what do you get for playing this gameplay mode. So as I mentioned at the beginning, you don't need to spend any um, stamina on this gameplay mode. So that means that you can really just play this whenever you want. And we can see here that the rewards are actually pretty substantial with each of these boxes containing um, the three star rarity uh, talent materials or trace materials. And you unlock these by just, you know, going through and completing various tasks in uh, the simulated, the swarm disaster specifically. And here in Communing Trails, we have one of the most important things for actually progressing and powering yourself up through the swarm disaster. And that is these numbers here, which have basically replaced, if you recall, I think like the resonance levels or whatever that power you up in simulated universe and the regular simulated universe. So this is what that is. We can see here that the path of destruction, for example, at level four that we, that I currently have it at, you get an attack boost as well as a resonance recharge boost and you'll just get more of these boosts and some of these like this one look pretty insane uh, most of them will cross over into all of the other categories as well if not all of them and how do you actually level up these paths it is right here in way of the path strider so while you're playing through the swarm disaster you really should focus on completing the missions here in way of the path strider so for example right now i am on uh, this mission where it says to complete a total of four domains with Blessing Trotter Beacon or Curie Trotter Beacon in the Swarm Disaster. So basically you beat up on some bonus trotters inside of Swarm Disaster and you will be able to complete this. By completing this, you will get one level to hunt, one level to elation. But really you want to keep an eye on what missions you are currently working on and absolutely target these in terms of what you do in your Swarm Disaster runs. You definitely want to prioritize these because that way you'll get more levels on your paths and therefore a lot more power and adding up all the boosts between all the paths is going to make a huge difference and it's going to make the simulated universe much much more manageable now another really important tip when it comes to actually powering up your swarm disaster experience is you can actually just do the easiest difficulty difficulty one in order to try and accomplish some of these missions in the communing trail so if for example you just want to power up as quickly as possible just do difficulty one and kill a few of these um, trotters inside of it in order to actually complete this because if you're gonna butt your head into difficulty five, it's gonna take literally like 
three to four times longer than difficulty one where you're one-shotting everything. Difficulty five, you will not be one-shotting everything. So it's gonna take you a much, much longer time. And what's even the point of completing these difficulties? Well, for one, you get these pretty nice um, first time clearance rewards, which is, yeah, basically just that, is that your goal is to eventually get all these first time clearance rewards. However, that's all that you really get for completing the hardest difficulties is those first time. So for now, especially at the beginning, just plow through difficulty one in order to level up your path resonances preferably up to perhaps around level 10 each roughly, and then you will be able to actually start more smoothly clearing the more difficult um, levels in the Swarm Disaster Simulated Universe. Next, I'm going to talk about some tips in terms of what characters you should consider using for the Swarm Disaster. So one thing that you'll notice about the Swarm Disaster is that it is heavily quantum and imaginary centric in terms of the enemies that appear. All the bugs which are part of the swarm and the giant bug boss at the end, it is weak to quantum as well as imaginary. And which character happens to be just released? Well, it is Dan Hung, the imbibitor Lune. He is absolutely one of the best characters for this gameplay mode. It is no accident that he happens to be one of the best characters for this gameplay mode with his release. However, there is another character that is actually highly recommended, and that is an Eidolon 4 or preferably Eidolon 6, Qing Chue. Qing Chue is absolutely going to destroy this as well because she does huge amounts of AoE quantum damage with the, which these bugs are absolutely weak to. So in terms of other DPS characters, obviously this thing being quantum weak is going to allow you to play your Zila quite effectively and the fact that it summons some weak adds on the side means that Zila can do quite well against this boss. However, in terms of other DPS characters like let's say Kafka and Blade, well, Although this thing isn't weak to lightning or wind, you do get an opportunity in the run to add an elemental weakness to this boss. And sometimes, you know, either lightning or wind or whatever might show up. But from what I've seen, you get to choose from two elements to add a weakness onto the boss. Now, because the boss hits so incredibly hard, I found myself just for difficulty level four, but keep in mind that I was very low leveled in terms of the path resonance buffs. I found myself really needing a preservation character as well as an abundance character. And it's no coincidence that this boss happens to be quantum weak, which for the next banner, which is Fushuan, I'm certain that Fushuan is going to be a great preservation path character for this simulated universe swarm disaster. But we'll have to wait and see just how incredible she's going to be for this gameplay mode. For the higher difficulties, preservation plus abundance might be highly recommended because otherwise you're going to get one shot and or, or you're not going to be able to heal off the damage that you take. And the last tip that I have with this gameplay mode is that because it is a permanent gameplay mode and the rewards are a one time thing that you just collect a single time and the fact that it takes no trailblaze power and also the fact that it just takes a long time to, you know, actually beat this, right? I've already spent quite a few hours playing this and I'm nowhere near unlocking and collecting all the rewards. My last bit of advice is to just simply take your time. This is a long term game mode in terms of like it being a permanent game mode as well as runs taking anywhere between I would say 10 to even 45 minutes on higher difficulties. Uh, this is not something that's gonna that you're gonna be able to just grind out in a single sitting most likely. So yeah, and the other thing is that you can't really make any of lasting mistakes. Like none of your decisions here are going to like uh, jeopardize you in, in the future. Like for example, activating Constellation 6 on Bennett for those of you guys that play Genshin Impact. You can't really make any long-term mistakes like that in this gameplay mode. So again, take your time, have some fun, experiment with builds and just blow stuff up because once you're stacked up with a ton of buffs, you are going to do an outrageous amount of damage. It, it is a lot of fun. All right, so yeah, those are my five tips. I didn't want to dive into every single nitty gritty mechanic or detail, like, oh, which path should you choose? What's the perfect build? 
I didn't really want to dive into that because really the possibilities here are endless. And if you've been playing the regular simulator universe, you probably have a decent idea of roughly how it works. So I'm not going to patronize you and be like, hey, you should pick this path or that path, because frankly, I don't even know yet, right? I don't even know yet. So this is a huge experimental phase for all of us. And the most important thing is to have fun with this gameplay mode because it is absolutely a blast to murder countless bugs and blow them up with a huge, huge amount of buffs. And just take your time, have a good time, and yeah, that's my advice. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.